America. My name is I'm Yosef Frempong, and I come to you live every Friday about this time to talk to you about how not to squander your life. And this is going to be a pretty decent show about that because I'm going to try to talk you into not being basic. The, the attractions of being basic, and if you don't know what basic means, it just means uh, in a way that's unobjectionable, taking in class and gender norms or whatever, and just kind of living on the terms society sets for you because you think in the end it will provide, right? If you just kind of obey the law and, and do what you're told and make everyone who everyone tells you to be happy, make the famous people happy and the, the people with power happy, everything will work and you don't have to rock the boat. Uh, last week's episode was on the dangerous individual who's, he didn't break the law, and this dangerous individual is not um, mentally ill, but they're not basic. And since they're not basic, they're a threat. And so we need to create a criminal justice sim uh, system that criminalizes them or a mental health system that pathologizes them when it's not about pathology or it's not about breaking the law. It's just about them not being basic. And society needs you to be basic, but then it'll also punish you for being basic and kind of you'll squander your life thinking that it'll take care of you. It this conversation happens because um, I was talking to a friend and she was saying that, like, look, you know, the white lady comes from like a petition class. Uh, the parents are professionals and all of that stuff. And what she said was this, like, you know, so white people, they take climate change seriously because there's a way in which there's a way in which it's really scary because their class won't protect them. And in everything else, all the other justice things white people do, it's for other people because they low-key think that their class will protect them. <laughs> Except for COVID and masks. This is why, uh, you know, a lot of people who are like, live and let live, use, like got really, really, really kind of vicious with the mask mandate and the expectation that like masks will save them. Because that's, you know, they were actually vulnerable in the way that their class couldn't really protect them against. Um, and, and then you saw the kind of ugliness that came out with white women in their masks. So what of the, a lot of the impetus towards climate change is that these same white people actually think that about like racial justice or labor justice, um, their class protections will save them. And honestly, about labor stuff, a lot of women straight up think their gender is going to save them. And they'll just, if they can't either become the professional themselves that they would like, in the, in the industry they like, they'll just marry one. They don't talk about or inherit from one. They don't talk in those terms, but they know of, you know, the savvy ones like will admit that that's a plan B but or that's a viable possibility because if you're out there shaking your stuff and you know what you're doing, it's not that hard if, you know, you're a decently schooled white woman to land some guy who's going to be a jerk but is going to deliver um you know six figures a year for being a jerk <laughs> but so that's 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 going to be their plan b and then they're not doing anything to, to to get rid of that plan b but the problem is going to be um the problem is going to be one anyone who aspires to that lifestyle that's not that's that's not that's not for everyone. If you're raising your sons and daughters, black people, if you're raising your sons and daughters to be pawned off on somebody else, that's not going to work for you. And make no mistake, a lot of your you know, white colleagues or whatever are half raising their kids with the assumption that like, they will be passed off to someone else who will take care of them. So they're not actually raising them to be you know, functional fighters in America. They're raising them to be semi-functional, but mostly just uh, to, to pass them off, to pawn them off on someone else once they hit a certain age, right? So uh, make that mistake. If you're trying to do that and you're black, you just don't know enough about economics because, if, if <laughs> yeah, you don't marry into stability if you're black. You marry for other reasons, that are good reasons, but if, like, even me, if, like, <laughs> if you're marrying me and for stability, that's ridiculous. I'll give you moral stability, I'm, like, I'll be very wise. But uh, if you're marrying, if you, if you think you'll get financial stability out of this arrangement, I don't, I don't know. 
you're making it into a financial liability. And a lot of other liability, too. It's funny because when I started doing this show, my wife, uh, you know, that's when we got life insurance. Because just in case I, 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 get, um, I get deceased. <laughs> and make no mistake, I'm actually very fit and relatively young so, and happy. So I love my life. And if anything happens to me, it did not happen by my own hands. I did not reach for a gun. I've never actually fired a gun. I do not own one. Uh, and I'm very agile. So there is no way that anything happened to me by accident. If anything happens to me, I do not forgive anyone. I do not want you to forgive everyone. Anyone, I want you to burn everything down. I want you to burn all of it down. If there's an it, burn it down. Nothing. There is no forgiveness. I like my life. I'm living a good life. I love my kids. There, I'm, I'm doing very well by them, and I will like, continue to do them. And if anything happens to me, your job is burn it down. And with that, let me hit the opening, and I'll raise, and I'll, then I'll go <laughs> talk about why uh, there's dangers in you raising, being basic, being part of basic institutions, and raising basic children. And by basic, I just mean easily accepting of conventional norms. To the beach, yo. Uh, yeah. Good to me. Never change the ways for the world or the government. If it was the president, then I would state facts. You leave it up to me, I paint the White House black and it can feature in your front. So what's wrong with the idea that you can just, you know, you, you, uh, just be part of a basic institution, a regular conventional black church? Hey, if you're just part of a regular conventional church, what is black church done? What is conventional black church done for black people? Well, it's told a lot of black people that they'll get their <laughs> their justice in the hereafter and right now you just have to like wait um your whole life literally your whole life to get your fair share right so that's the danger of being just part of a basic black church right and if you're part of a basic white church what has the basic white church ever done for you uh, well except like make all of your relatives who you don't like the kind of people that you don't like right so don't be a part of any basic institutions now there's this notion that, and this is why I started with the environmental, uh, the climate change story. There's this notion that some white people have that, in general, their class will save them. The problem is, being basic doesn't even save white people anymore. It, the world's gotten more confusing. It's gotten more complicated. Being basic isn't enough. <laughs> like, like, unless it's just, it's, it's not the guarantee it was even for them. It's a decent shot, but you have to do a little bit more dirty and you're going to and you're going to have to and you know more about the dirtiness in a way than maybe your forebears did. Right. So being basic isn't doesn't really save anyone. And you'll screw up your kids because you'll be huge hypocrites to your kids. And then you'll with your huge hypocrisy because you. How does this work? All right. So it used to be the case. In the olden days, white people got around being horrible because they could teach their kids to be horrible. And then their kids would go and the whole media apparatus didn't exactly show how horrible white people were when they were whiting out loud. So it wasn't that big of a deal that they were, you know, awful in order to secure this lifestyle that they, they, that they had normalized. Right now, it's the case where if you're this horrible white person and you're trying to secure the lifestyle that America pretty much delivers to horrible white people, your kids will look at you and be like, I don't want to do that. And then they will be horrible in a different way. They will be wasteful, possibly. <laughs> they, might just, they might just like languish because they don't want to be horrible like you, but you don't know anything else. So if you, are, if you just try to inculcate them into like this basic lifestyle, they might rebel against it in a different way. And none of that ends with them taking you to your doctor's appointments when you get older. <laughs> They'll just resent you in a different way. So uh, it's not even working. The, the idea that being basic will get you financial success, will get you parenting success, will get you marital success, and will get you even political success isn't a foregone conclusion in the way that it was. And so don't do it because it was never going to lead to meaning. 
And it was always going to lead into like having a revisionist funeral where people just ignored your dirty work. But now it's not even going to have the veneer of passing on um, uh, in the same way that it used to. So you can't be, there's this, there's just no life for basic. And, you know, a lot of good, and this happens, I have a lot of professional class liberal friends with screw-up kids, and they don't understand why that is. This is the liberals with the screw-up kids. The conservative kids are screwed up in different ways because um, there were fewer illusions. <laughs> illusions. But the liberals, the, the liberals who screw up their kids, they just didn't have enough content. And and so their kids end up being really, really, really kind of awful people in ways that the liberal parents don't really know what to deal with. And yeah, just being basic is not going to, to save you. It's not going to save your kids. It's not going to stop them from not doing drugs. It's not going to, it's just the safety net's not there for the, the basic American. The one who just un on uh, critically accepts norms both with school and gender and all of that stuff it's just not there you'll end up it, well it's always ended up in drinking but you'll just end up drinking and divorce because like the, the game like you like the stories you tell yourself and the stories you tell other people won't um won't cohere in the same way right and it won't cohere and and so don't be basic. It's not going to save you. Don't raise your kids to be basic. It's not going to save them. I have a lot of friends, uh, you know, who, who are surprised when their unexceptional kids who are not necessarily unexceptional, but they're only exceptional insofar as they do exactly what's told when it's told to them. It's not working. It's, it's not leading to the kind of success and the kind of meaning that they wanted for their kids because they thought like not so deep down that the institutions would provide if you just did everything diligently without any, without regard for like the dignity of the thing you were doing, just because you were told to by someone who was more important than you. If you just followed all of the rules, you would do well. And it's just not the case anymore. I don't think it's the case. And it, shouldn't be the case for anybody in America because if you following the rules ends up with black degradation because that's how the order of America. So I'm kind of, I'm happy that being basic doesn't work anymore um, because it's never worked for black people and the veneer that insofar as it did work for white people, that veneer is coming off. And I like that. I support that. Uh, I think basic kids should get punished with below mediocrity. If you're raising your kids just to like, adopt uh, like adapt into the norms of america i hope your kid fails and i will be one to push him down push him down because and i will castigate you as a parent because you saw this and yet you still said well i'm gonna try to ride this basic thing out maybe my kid will be a nice accountant for like some banker and uh, they'll be great because no they'll be miserable they might get the banking job they might even be a nice accountant but they'll screw up their marriage they'll screw up their kids will hate them i hope the kids get all the drug habits and all the ennui because that's what you get for trying to think that just being a basic american in a world in an america that needs fixing will um will work and if you like anything i'm saying go ahead and kick down five fifteen or fifty dollars a month to www.thefunkyacademic.com because depending on who you talk to I'm uh, making myself down white unemployable by telling you guys the truth about the stakes of this parenting. Um, so don't be, don't do it. Don't do it the way you should do it. Because if you do it the way you should do it, maybe, maybe the conventions will provide. I don't know. I don't think it's the case. I think it would be irresponsible. Both, like, even in a self-interested way, like, I don't think it will actually lead to the, to the, to the outcomes that, that, that you had promised. And, like, politically, it's not going to do anything for black people, right? So this was the Cosby myth, right? A lot of people saw Cosby in a different world. Different world almost had me going to, to, to Howard. <laughs> like, this close to going to Howard just because it's a different world. I had a little crush on Kim. I thought how was going to do it. Now I, I'm glad I went to a state school in California because I would just I would I would still be in debt. I would still be in debt 
Um, and I, I, I'm not convinced that it, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, so there's this life, there's this idea that if you just kind of do what you want, do what conventions, um, lay out for you to do, it's not a trap, but really the conventions are luring in you, luring you to a life that will actually, uh, be it's a trap it's luring you into a life that might be good for the standing conventions to keep them going but it won't necessarily reward you because you are disposable to those conventions so the moment you step out of line by mistake even um they'll toss you out and you know this a lot of black people think they can kind of live and like they could stably live and just not make white people mad and that'll work out somehow like miss ann will write a big check to you at the end and it'll all work out that's just not a good way to live life but because miss ann will string you along and also uh, so not only will the check and the check's not going to come consistently and not only that, um, it's internally contradictory because the stories you'll have to tell yourself about yourself are going to be dicey. The stories you'll have to tell your kids about yourself are going to be dicey. And like, I can just say, like, I believe in integration, but I don't integrate on my knees. <laughs> like, like, because that, that's true. And I can tell and that. And that's how I get away, like, with pretty much living the life I want to live because it's true. I, I believe in integration. I just don't integrate on my knees. And... Um, I integrate standing up straight <laughs> on my terms. Um, and, and, that's, and that's the way to be in life. And that's not particularly basic. And it, and it makes people nervous both for themselves and on my behalf. But, and yet I still live. <laughs> and yet I still live. And like I said, I'm, I thrive. Um, I did. I did have a little scare last uh, yesterday morning. I went out for a run, but it was too late. I mean, it's too early in the morning. Yesterday I was running. I run without my glasses. I don't see very well. But I was, yesterday I was running without my glasses, and so you know, it's going, 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 going. And I'm a little over forty, so these things actually matter. And then I hit a speed bump and I trip, but I did not fall. I did trip though. So I'm running and I tripped, but I did not fall. But I had visions of what happens if I fall. Because I, for a while, I, it was a kind of an open question whether I have a bad hip or not, or if I was just out of shape. Turns out I'm just out of shape, and like as I lost weight and got back in shape, uh, the hip got better. But like, it could be the case that I fall and don't get back up again. So that was that was special. Had a little one of those over forty scares, because uh, you know when you're young, you can just kind of. You can just say like, oh, I might have fallen, but not like I would have gotten hurt. Now I'm like, ooh, I don't fall. I don't even change directions anymore. I feel like lateral movement is for people in their 20s and early 30s. I got a friend who popped an Achilles rounding a, like a softball base. And like now I don't move side to side. I don't turn corners. I go backwards and I backpedal. I go forwards and I backpedal. I don't go side to side. It's not for me. It's for other people. Other people go side to side. I speak to you every Friday <laughs> and it's my way of it's one more of my ways of not being basic now so there's this idea that if you just be a basic american america will provide that's just not true anymore and it shouldn't have been true because being a basic american was anti-black but now it's just not true so you have a lot of people who are confused um it's true for i i honestly think the only class for whom that is definitely true might be like one the upper class and then maybe upper class like white women because if because like their plan b is just landing a dude right and like and if you have the right class affects these dudes have to marry somebody right so like but even them i don't but that's still not a recipe for meaning that's still not a recipe for meaning in your life. And it's still not a recipe for like not raising like kids that aren't screw ups. Right. So a lot of people raise kids that aren't screw up because they're not honest about themselves, about like some of the cheats they took in life, some of the uh and then and, and how they got from point A to point B. And 
then they try to pass that on to the kid. Either the kid takes it seriously and then it doesn't work out for them or they don't take it seriously. They see their parents are hypocrites and that doesn't work out either. So just don't, don't be basic because it's not, gonna, not, gonna, not going to save you. So last week was a show about how being a dangerous individual, you have all of these institutions working against you to stamp you out because you're a danger to the, so, to the, the, the um, social order. This show is about being, how being basic won't necessarily save you because the social order is unjust. And, as, and now a social order that's unjust might actually... Like lead to problematic contradictions where some aspects of your life you'll thrive in, but other aspects like you'll end up thriving job but a divorce or a good family but no job or like it'll all just be it's being basic was never going to work for you. It's just not and it shouldn't work. I am not a fan. And if I'm doing my job right, then simply being basic and uncritically taking in our norms uh, will not work at all. I also want a federal job guarantee. So like, I think you can't be politically independent unless you're financially stable. Um, and so since you get independence through certain sort of interactions, the interaction we need to government, like with respect to economic stability, needs to be like a guaranteed job. If you want to work, we'll find enough work, we'll find work for you to do. Because there are a lot of jobs that don't get done. We just don't think, but the people who can pay for it get it done for them but we just don't think everybody deserves clean water. Everybody deserves a local paper. Everyone deserves community theater or access to good music. Um, but I think everybody deserves that because culture is what allows you to like make sense of your freedom. So turn your freedom into meaning. So if everyone deserves it, but not everyone can pay for it, that means we need to pay people. The government needs to pay people to produce the cultural infrastructure for people. I had a friend, had a friend who had a 101 year old grandmother. Um, died around year 2000, born in 1899, 101, black, 101 um, um, years old. And what this guy had was, um, what this guy had was pictures, a few pictures of her. And I'm just thinking, what I, it's just an awful world where all we have is pictures from that woman. I think everyone who turns, everyone who turns 75 should get three hours, and this we have the capacity to do this. Everyone who turns 75 should get three hours of a three-person team, comes to their house, with sets up a video camera, an audio setup, and they just get three hours to tell their side of the story. They get an hour and a half one, one day, one week, and then the next week the team comes back, they get an hour and a half. And then that's uploaded onto the Library of Congress's servers, and that's our cultural archive. Because right now, if you don't do that, the only people who get to tell the story of how life was or how life is are rich people who write books and memoirs and get them distributed and published and who are literate and can get ghostwriters and stuff. I don't want, I could give a hot damn about Michelle Obama's book um, or Barack Obama's book. No, I want, I want working class black people who have a third grade education, who made it to 80 to tell their side of the story and to tell the truth. Because once you're about that age, like you don't, you got nothing to lose. <laughs> so you might actually get the truth. And I want that archived. And I want that archived so it's in an easily searchable database. That's what, that's what America can provide for us to be a better nation, to make our nation whole. Um, and that is not a basic idea. But as you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. And we have the capacity. And the Library of Congress, it, it, that should be its duty to sustain such an archive. Um, just imagine the projects that could come out of a searchable database like that. I think it's, it's just a beautiful, fantastic thing. All right. So um, my nine or my eight year old giving me the stink eye, so I'm going to have to go help her out with math. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Now, you're done with your mouth? Oh, okay. Well, good. All right, well, you want to come say hi to the people? Yeah. This is my six-year-old. going to come say hi to the people. All right. Come on. Yay. Yay. She's finished her mouth. All right. Yay. Hi. Hi, people. Hi, people. All right. So I'm going to go. Uh, I think we got uh, a little bit of free time, and then we're going to do lessons. And then, and then I'll see you next week on, oh, a, a show I have in mind. And it's going to be a surprise. Remember, don't raise basic children. Don't be a part of basic institutions. Be a part of just institutions. Raise just children. Bye.
Uh, what's up? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit the button pretty soon. And then we'll go. Okay. All right. And that's, that's going to be a little bit scary because you want to, like, in a pinch, you're going to say, well, the institution will provide for us. So I just need to follow the rules. The in, black people, this is, should be clear for you. The institution will not provide for you. Like, the system will not work. It's not set up to work for you. It's set up for you to kiss somebody else's butt. And you don't want that to be your life. You don't want that to be a legacy. Actually, one reason I do this is because when I'm in the ground, those kids are going to be able to watch these videos. Um, uh, and that's going, to be one, that's going to be my archive. And then my grandkids. So, like, I got a plan. And if you support me in this plan, go ahead and kick in. www.funkyacademic.com. And white people, being basic isn't going to save you, your relationships, your job, your marriage, or your kids either. You think it is. You're going to roll your dice that way. It's not going to work out. I'm just saying. You think it is. But... We're all niggerized now. So don't do it. And so none of us are free to wall free. All right. Thank you for your time. And I will see you next week. If you appreciate the work I do every week and you think that I should continue to do it because I'm giving you the quality of political knowledge and insight that will help you not squander your life and kind of rescue meaning from it, then go ahead and go to www.funkyacademic.com and kick in five, fifteen, or fifty dollars a month, or make one enormous donation. I like the monthlies because it allows me to budget more, and that'll help me, you know, with a marketing budget or getting better equipment that works all the time. Because a lot of, in a lot of ways, freedom means having equipment that works every time you turn it on. <laughs> and I want to be a free Negro, so. Um, if you like what I do, go to funkyacademic.com and contribute. Thanks often comes in the form of cash. And the site takes credit cards. If you appreciate the work I do every week and you think that I should continue to do it because I'm giving you the quality of political knowledge and insight that will help you not squ